Hey, welcome back, everyone. Um, tonight we're talking a little bit about salvation, and I have Jeremy Tate, and I'm Lucas, and, and we're going to dig in a little bit deeper. So for me, at least, my understanding of the word salvation outside of the Christian context is, is you're, you're being saved from something, uh, and someone is saving you, and you're being saved to somewhere. Is that kind of the understanding? And now we can kind of put that into the, the, the biblical context but I just wanted to kind of open with that. And there's, there's questions like why and, and what does it mean and, and what does it look like for an individual on, on their spiritual journey? So, Jeremy, tell me what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, well, you just put that really well of the, yeah, even you have to be saved from somewhere and to somewhere. And um, that's like where we get to the message of the gospel. And it's actually a really offensive message in some sense because it starts out saying that, I mean, perfect. And even the book well, I think of that's John. Some, something everyone agrees on. We, I can't find one other person that says that they're not a sinner. I mean, I'm guessing you're getting at that. Yeah. We're imperfect. We're all sinners. Every human on the planet. Like that's, that's like a, a, a truth that transcends Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe not super offensive. That's what you're saying. True. Yeah. <laughs> true. I guess. Yeah, and maybe the other part of that that is the offensive part is the fact that it's actually a problem because that's the one where, like, we've all heard questions and maybe even thought them too of how could a good God, a loving God, send a good person, like, or let evil happen to a good person, send a good person to hell or yeah. whatever. And it's like, well, it, and like, at first it seems pretty straightforward and kind of like a head scratcher. Um, but I, I, Jesus put this really well in actually in John chapter three. I was just reading this earlier today and he describes God as light. And he, he says this, um, he says, this is the judgment. The light has come into the world in this case, referring to himself and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. And so he, he says, God is light. God is super perfect. He's super holy. And if you were to take darkness, which is the absence of light, right. and you take light and you try to put light and darkness together, you just get light and darkness is destroyed. Absolutely. And that's, the, that's I think, the part that we're actually saved from God's judgment because we're imperfect and we actually deserve his judgment. And he being just a perfect God can't be in the presence of us. And so what happens is we get what's coming to us and we are totally undeserving um, of being with him because, and we can't. With we him. can't because we've, we've literally separated ourselves at birth, right? From, from yeah. Adam's fall to where we're at now, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I see it. Yeah, absolutely. And so the best part is though, before that, that's not the end of the story. Jesus says, classic, I think probably one of the most commonly known Bible verses, John three sixteen. you know, right, right. memorize it as a kid. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And it's like, boom. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's belief. That's one piece of it. I feel like there needs to be more. You're leaving me hanging, Jeremy. <laughs> Great question. Well, <laughs> the thing is, this is the deceptively simple part about the gospel of Christ is it is, it just comes by belief. But the, the word belief is kind of a problem because even like if somebody asks you, what does it mean to believe in something? Like, I guess, what would our culture say? Yeah. You, well, seeing is believing, right? This is a lot of it. But seeing in this sense is, or, or believing in this sense is, is, is having faith in something and believing it beyond just seeing it, just knowing it's true in your heart. Yeah. Is that how I, I see this belief? Yeah, totally. And what was cool is Paul summed this up really well. Uh, it was in Romans chapter 10, um, verses 9 and 10. He actually goes through and um, uh, he says this. He says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he, he uses that word saved. But this is something I was thinking about. He says, like, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and then believe in your heart, that actually changes the way you live a lot. And like I did one of those, like got super nerdy and looked up the, the Greek word for uh, believe. And it was like, uh, 
piss to or something. I don't know. Some I don't know how to pronounce it. Somebody out there is uh, kind of about to correct me. <laughs> <laughs> something, but it's said to be convinced of, or be like they believe it. They're like. Yeah, I absolutely believe it. I, like sometimes in the store, um, they have that. I can't believe it's not butter. And then I would just grab a stick of butter and be like, I can't believe it's not butter because it is. You know, like, it is butter. right? Exactly. <laughs> Something. So like the belief is there. It actually is evidence in our actions. Where personally, I I think that everything we do is simply a result of what we believe about God and ourselves, and that all of our actions are just actually just show whatever I currently believe. So make sure I'm following you. So. You, you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart and through those two things, your life will change to be an outward example of what you really believe. Exactly. Yeah, and it starts on the inside though because there's nothing we do to be saved. It's not like I can earn my salvation in any possible way, but instead, um, the outward actions come. And even like Book of James, the, the dude goes in there and he says, faith without works is dead. And he gets up this idea that if nothing changes eventually, then nothing happened. There's no belief there. Right. There's no faith. But rather, when we are fully convinced that Jesus actually raised from the dead, and I'm willing to say it with my words that actually God's Lord, there's like, you know, there's, there's not really any like, well, I've, I've come to Jesus. I'm just not willing to tell anyone about it. Like that, that's not actually, it's not actually there. That's not how it will be. So what do you say about the person that has believed and, and, considered themselves saved but on the outside looking at their life you can't really tell anything's different are they just lying to themselves are they not really following through with what they originally said or maybe they forgot about it i mean what are your thoughts yeah that is a tough question and actually i i hope that's one that we can talk about even in the discussion Sorry, a, little jumped, too. Jumped, jumped no, a little bit too no but. that's great um but one of the things that is is interesting is that our life always changes but it may not be at the pace that we want it to like everything's always at god's pace but jesus loves to describe things as fruit and he says that if you abide in me you will bear fruit and and fruit are he you know paul gives a bunch of examples it's love joy peace is yeah. is these like deeper internal things that then come out and jesus says like if you believe in him you will bear fruit and what comes out is actually evidence of what's on the inside um so I love how true that is. Yeah. It's such a true like thing that's hard to wrap your brain around if you're not used to thinking that way. But it's so true when your heart changes on the inside, what comes out, your actions, the words, the way you talk to people is is fruit bearing yeah. life, you know, the way you the way you live. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's so interesting because even like from earlier we were talking about like I I was just thinking about my story a little bit because I heard and read these passages so many times as a kid and was like, oh yeah, do this. And, but I actually missed it to where, um, and people told me the truth of like, you, it actually is just belief in Jesus, but I truly missed it. And so over, like over and over again, what changed was that deep down, okay, Jesus, I'm confessing that you're Lord, whatever you say, I'm willing to do that. Like I pre-decided to do that. And um, like as crazy as it sounds, I actually believe that you raised from the dead, that you did supernatural things and that God is still working, moving today. And that is actually what began to, that's where God grew, grew the fruit in. And so it's, it's so weird because if you try to, if you try to just like, okay, I'm just going to be try. peaceful, you know, like it doesn't actually work. It's not how it works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here's, here's a question for you, Lucas. Sure. I've been uh, dying to ask is if someone were to ask you about like the gospel or what that is, how would you say that in your words? Um, you know, I would, I would talk about how we have a God that is extremely in love with us as humans, made the entire universe, made the whole world, but loves us as kind of the, the pinnacle of his creation. Hmm. And, then, and then talk about how we are sinful by nature and we were separated from God, and God said, "You know, I don't want, I don't want, you know, the keystone of my creation to live apart from me." So He brings Jesus as fully man, fully God, to kind of bridge that gap. And it's not really until we ask for Jesus to come into our lives that we can be sanctified with Christ, or with with God, and, and make that connection and bridge that gap. So that's, and maybe I'm 
It, does that make sense? That's kind yeah. of how I would explain it in my, in yeah. my mind if I'm talking to a friend. I think that's uh, makes sense in my mind. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So. That's so good. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's, that's how I'd explain it. But yeah. I know, I know we're, we're kind of running out of time. Um, but this is, this is an awesome, and I think we can con continue this conversation um, on the call. If you're, if you're online and, and you see below in the description, there's going to be a link. Uh, click on that. We're going to continue this conversation and talk about, uh, more about what salvation is, what it even means, the steps maybe to go through it, and, yeah. and answer some questions. So yeah. as you're clicking on that, we'll be there in a sec.